Thanks. Thank you very much for your welcome. And um, thank you very much uh, to uh, Brian and the organizers and volunteers, everyone who's put together all the effort to make this conference work. It's, it's been a really great experience. And I've, I just felt really welcome when I walked in this morning. And it's been a really positive day. And, and um, so far, I've got a lot out of it. In fact, I've made a list of things that I, I wanted to add to my talk, but I'm not sure if I can remember them during the talk. <laughs> Um, so I'm, uh, as it said on the um, poster there, I'm, I guess, a web professional. I'm not a developer or a programmer. I did start off um, as, a, um, as a web designer in around uh, 96. And um, I then moved on to become web development manager at the State Library. And I have um, a team of three developers, two um, PHP, Drupal, um, developers and one database administrator. Uh, we are in the IT team and um, um, we also work very closely with the communications team at the State Library and they usually handle the project management and the content and then we work through them to initiate when we initiate new projects and, and establish requirements, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of my uh, talk will cover some of the similar ground that um, Daniel from um, DWAR covered this morning. Um, a show of hands, who attended Daniel's presentation? Thank you. It's about six people, I guess, um, <laughs> from this group. But uh, yeah, um, OK. You're in the wrong room. Good. <laughs> I thought I don't want to listen to you. You're welcome. That's fine. Um, OK, so. Um, get into the presentation. So uh, as we said, I'm from the State Library of Victoria. If I was working there 100 years ago, that's what it would have looked like. Um, but unfortunately, there was no Drupal then. <laughs> um, now, this is what it looks like. And um, I'm, my office is down this corner of the building over here. And um, Brian, who's been working with us on this current project, has also been coming into the office with us um, from time to time as well. Um, State Library of Victoria is um, our, our, our operations manager used to say was the, um, the greatest uh, internet cafe in the southern hemisphere. It's a great place to come and get free wireless internet or if you're a um, university student come in to meet your friends and um, have a sleep in one of the chairs as well. It's got um, one of the hidden things about the library is the actual reference staff who can help you. If you have a question, any kind of question, they would love to help you. And so, and there's a wide range of expertise there. You'll, you get a specific person who has an area of expertise that you're interested in. And um, when people say to me, oh, it's, I'm sorry you have to work at a library because Google, of course, has killed libraries. Well, in fact, um, we're getting um, the, the, the key to information is to actually navigating your way through, and that's where a library can help you, and particularly the um, reference staff. Um, okay, so presentation is about a new exhibition at the State Library called Love and Devotion. It's starting in March, and it's running for three months, and it's um, it covers some historic manuscripts from a range of different um, cultures there. And it's, it's done in conjunction with the, um, the University of Oxford. And um, this particular exhibition is about getting these um, manuscripts out of the, the collections in Oxford and putting them on display and getting some experts to come and talk about um, the, this, the material. And, um, we ran a similar kind of exhibition a few years ago called um, Medieval Imagination with Medieval Manuscripts. And it was the biggest thing that libraries ever done. And we're expecting that this will also be a really significant um, exhibition. So our, um, we did a, um, in terms of the online component, why are we, uh, the reason why I'm here today, well, we did um, a user survey of our users during the year last year. And we found that, um, actually the online exhibitions component of the library is one of the more successful things so we'd like to build on our strengths and here we are getting into this new project um, but what's 
what's the key component to the project? Well, a few years ago when this uh, Drupal 5 was launched, um, the library hadn't heard of Drupal. Um, but um, in 2009, we wanted to get rid of our old CMS, and we um, came to a um, point where we had to make a decision, and it was brought down to the, uh, the technical staff and um, to, to come up and to try and analyze that, that situation. Um, so this was in preparation for our project, in, in, which was released last year in June um, 2010. Um, we um, had some requirements to, um, to drive the decision point. Um, the library, to its credit, wanted an open source product. And it was quite a surprise to us and the, the dev team. We thought, well, what are they talking about? <laughs> Do they really want open source? That is great. We, it was something that we were lobbying for. Um, it did match our skill set or the available skill set that we could access, um, which were primarily um, PHP developers. In fact, we start off with completely zero uh, Drupal uh, capability. Um, but um, the, the Drupal concept looked like something that we could get our staff into really quickly. Um, not only that, but it once the um, new CMS was installed, the, the developers would be able to get in and be able to continue to work on it and develop it. So rather than a kind of a bl black box scenario, which is what we had in our previous CMS, um, it was going to be an ongoing uh, development. Um, it came down to a decision between um, Drupal and, and Joomla. Um, and the, the point that Drupal stood out was the uh, developer community was very strong and we would have ongoing support for our developers to whatever they wanted to do, they could get that support. Um, we did look at um, my source matrix as well. That was one of the considerations, but we felt like um, it, it, we were really actually looking for a pure open source option, which is where uh, say both uh, Drupal or Joomla fit into. Um, so as I mentioned, we have our own team. Um, at that stage, we had a couple more staff, but we've since downsized. We've got some, some budget restrictions. We're back down to two uh, developers now. Um, so um, what do we find um, with when we use Drupal? Um, we, you know, there we had the previous speaker um, here mentioned that some um, users like. A, coming from a base, base of very limited computer knowledge or whatever, um, the average user might find it difficult to get into the CMS or particularly use some of the more complex components. But from our point of view, it's actually an easy to use CMS. And the staff that we work with are all you know, quite um, computer literate. And they found getting into the CMS not a problem. If, as long as we can explain clearly what their requirements are, it's, all the tasks are quick and easy to do. Um, so um, we we'll, we we'll love the advantage that theming provides for design uh, flexibility. Um, we love the ability to tap into modules. We um, probably didn't appreciate at the start, but as we got into Drupal and as security has become a greater issue for us, um, we have benefited benefited from the um, strong security that Drupal has and. Um, I think uh, Dimitri touched on that this morning and that um, it, security is such a high uh, issue in terms of priorities and um, it's well looked after um, by the Drupal community. So um, again, the community of collaboration, that's such a strong point for us. Um, and also we got to meet Dries last year when he visited the library for Drupal Meetup that was um, host that we hosted. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this graphic, but um, another thing about the community is that there isn't a closed inner circle. The inner circle is equals the Drupal community as a whole, and um, that that is a great strength that it has. That it's it is open. Anybody can contribute, step up, and, and make a difference. Um, 
I guess for, for my experience, like working with our team in the, in the office, um, I'm not 100% sure if our Drupal developers have um, logins on Drupal.org. Brian, you might know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so there is, of course, there's going to be a group in the Drupal community who are just downloading the software, installing it, and running it, and, and without contributing back. But um, it's part of our, um, and, you know, one of our goals is to try and encourage our developers to get more involved in the community. And um, Brian has been, uh, I know, keen on that as well. So we are trying to, we hopefully we'll see that develop with this project as it's a good opportunity for that to happen. Um, so how, what have we achieved so far with Drupal at the library? Well, I, I think that graph shows we've got three quarters of our traffic is now uh, delivered via Drupal. And we're um, up to uh, 220,000 uh, views um, per month at the moment, uh, overall. And this is um, a Drupal site that we have got um, at the moment. Our, our main corporate site is the one we delivered last year. Uh, um, and not last year, but uh, 2010. And um, our mobile site, which we delivered um, as a separate installation last year. Um, I wonder if, uh, can anybody uh, try that on their phone, see if that's uh, working? Then I can, I know, then I'll be confident to know that's all, all okay. <laughs> um, inside a dog, um, which is a youth adult, a young adult literature site, which is um, discussed in the previous presentation, which was developed by Atomic. Um, Ergo is a redevelopment site that um, of an existing site we did last year and um, the last one, Burke and Wills, was also developed by Atomic. So uh, where are we on the Drupal learning curve? Um, yeah, for me, I'm, as not a developer, I um, haven't yet uh, done a Drupal install, so I'm <laughs> something probably I should do. But according to Dimitri, maybe I should go and get uh, Lego Mindstorms first and then <laughs> build up from there. Um, so I think we were, I'm not sure if Brian agrees with me, but we were probably up here somewhere where we were doing some of the stuff. But then with the help of um, Reality Loop uh, with this current project, hopefully we're getting up a couple of steps. Um, and um, certainly a couple of those areas there that we can improve you know, improve on. Um, but um, that's, a, that's a what it's all about, just learning and improving. Um, so how about this actual project that we're working on now? Well, it's, it's uh, the idea of it is it to deliver a platform for delivering this online e exhibition. And it will be an independent, well, it is an independent installation of Drupal from our corporate site. Um, it's quite a significant extra investment that we've made, um, but it's all about moving forward in terms of our use of Drupal and um, just occupying the online space a lot more effectively. Um, we um, felt it was a great opportunity to work with um, Reality Loop on this project, and through um, Brian's help, we're able to do, use our first uh, Drupal 7 installation, previously all our systems were, um, well, our sites were in six, and um, so, but the, of course, it's not yet going to be, it's not yet launched, it will be happening in February, um, but um, we felt that Drupal 7 could offer um, quite a few benefits in terms of the improvements in the functionality. Um, it's a good time to get involved with Drupal 7 because there's a lot of development happening at the moment. Um, we also really wanted to avoid having to upgrade the site in the future from six to seven. So um, we thought, well, we don't want to miss the boat. We don't want to be left behind in terms of development. So that's a point at which we can um, um, jump into seven. We're not, of course, we still maintain our sil uh, six capability. Um, but um, we're just adding on this new aspect. Um, so, um, Dribble 7, um, it's as we've got, I 
guess we're, what we're looking for there with Drupal 7 is, is getting into modules which are um, incorporating a lot of functionality that people have, have wanted to put into 6, but it, we're hanging off. Um, but also, I guess we felt that, well, if we're still going with 6, well, you may, there may be stuff that you wanted to, advances, advances you wanted to make with 6, but that's, that development isn't happening with those modules. So um, that gives us the opportunity to start a, a beautiful love affair with version 7. So I've got there a list of um, benefits that we've identified and um, a couple of references down the bottom there which also I think cover these pretty well. Um, now, when I look at this list I'm thinking, well, um, a lot of these quite technical things and I'm not a developer so how can I explain them? But it, if um, you have a look through there, I think that um, it, and if you work with seven, you probably, hopefully, you'd agree with those. But um, this is what I, the developers have discussed with me in terms of what they they think it is, um, and um, yeah, ability to do more more stuff. Well, that's great. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's kind of funny because uh, the the um, our developers are might stuff from my team are not here this weekend, but um, it's um, amusing for them to know that I'm d um, present presenting on this topic when I really, I don't actually work in, in, the, in the software <laughs> myself. But anyway, um, so, okay, so yeah, PHP support, for example, we've got to, we're, we want to move, he move ahead with the upgraded version of uh, PHP. We don't want to sit behind an old version. Um, one of the great things is, um, well, one of the headaches that we found with um, CCK, um, you know, creating uh, content types and fields and what have you, that that is now a lot easier. Um, we I probably um, should mention um, with our original project that we we got a lot of help through um, uh, previous next and. David's here, who worked with us on uh, some of the components of our original site, and um, and we got some uh, we had some training delivered by Kim Pepper. He got us just over that hurdle of, of learning from the start. And I remember the, the developers saying, um, well, they went through the training, and they said, okay, now we know that stuff, but now we have to do CCK fields, and I don't know what to do. So <laughs> that was a bit of a moment there where we said, okay. We need to get into the hard, hard stuff now. Um, so it's great to have that code in, that um, all of the useful modules that have been brought into Core with 7. Um, the admin interface is a lot more logical and easy to use. The CMS is uh, more capable for our um, content people. Um, the use of Drush is more effective. And um, so we, a Drush is something that we um, incorporated us on Brian's advice. Um, we hadn't used it before, so that's been a great advantage. Um, there was Brian gave us quite a bit of advice at the start of our project, um, and some of the things we didn't pick up, you know, <laughs> that he recommended. But a lot of that to do with our system side because we don't manage our systems. We have our, our systems team, and that's their um, responsibility to manage the, the software that's there. Um, okay, so easy to use um, to manage our users. Um, methodologies that just make things or development more streamlined. Streamline. Okay, I've got user management twice, but anyway, <laughs> using themes much more effectively and efficiently. Efficiently. So that all those things of stuff that we found have been advantages with jumping to, to seven. So um, it'd be interesting to hear if anybody have any comments at the end of like how their experience has been between the two. Um, so um, some of, here's some comments on some of the modules that we've used with this um, installation. So we have quite a um, complex um, design arrangement and um, although I can't show you that, you will, you will know when it, when it does get released. Um, so um, the use of context is pretty critical. Um, we um, like the improvements with the views. 
we um, have enjoyed um, the ability to create more complex layouts with panels. Um, we've incorporated a new module, which um, Reality Loop has um, contributed. Um, and um, it provides a, an option for us to use the same functionality that you can see with uh, Zoomit, which is a remotely hosted service. And um, as of uh, last week, there are 24 sites actually using that module. Um, so the JW Player, um, that was another, um, um, the video was a discussion point earlier this morning. Um, the ability to add in closed captions into our videos is really important. Um, we um, have got, um, we already run JW Play on our current site, version 4, and we're, we're going to upgrade to version 5. Um, and we, um, you know, we um, we're going to appreciate the advantage that that provides because it's offering both um, HTML5 and um, Flash support. Okay, so um, we expect to be, we're using um, the lexicon module for, um, for our glossary system, um, which is providing an A to Z of special terms to do with the exhibition. Well, so there's a couple of characters which are from the, um, the, the language, that the, um, the Persian language, and we want to display those well in the correct order, and um, so that we're proposing we'll, we'll submit a patch to the module to enable that to happen. Uh, we've also got a request in for um, a um, patch onto Path Auto. Um, so the search, we're putting in um, solar indexing, and one of the key things for this project is that we, um, because it's, a, it's an exhibitions platform that will be used to deliver a range of different exhibitions in the future, um, this platform will have um, different themes for each site. It will be sub-sites of the same subdomain. Um, we need to be able to search within each site separately and um, isolate the search. Um, and also we need to be able to um, gain more, um, I guess more value out of their search results by displaying, say, icons and that sort of thing for the different content types that are in the search results. So that's where we can get the um, advantage by using Solar. Um, so, um, okay, we, um, we are doing some integration with our corporate data, the corporate site data, and this is including events and our multimedia items such as audio and video, which we have hosted on our corporate site. And there's going to be things like audio tours and there's um, interviews with experts and those sort of things. So there's quite a bit of uh, multimedia in there. A lot of events as well from um, conference events, um, education activities, all kinds of things which you can book into to um, experience the, the exhibition. Well, all these are being brought over via RSS and we're tagging the items or the content staff are tagging the items that are displaying there. Um, oh yeah, this picture reminds me uh, the, um, the use of, oh well, the, um, the guy there is a couple of guys that have beards there and I uh, thought, well, okay, that's um, not such a bad thing to have a beard after all if it's like that. <laughs> um, okay, so what are we in at the moment? Well, we're, we're looking at some of the issues like cross-browser compatibility where we want to be able to support HTML5 but then uh, IE7 is giving us a real headache and from that point of view. So that's a real um, uh, problem for our developers. Um, our, the main browsers that I use to support is, is quite a strange kind of mixture. Our, our latest browsers are um, often way behind in terms of com in comparison with world usage, world trends, um, particularly um, IE9. Our IE9 users haven't kept up with world trends for some reason. We can't work out why. Um, so what else have we done? We've done, we have delivered some other um, functionality um, outside of Drupal. Um, for example, we're using a hosted a version of a timeline function. That's via Tiki Toki. Um, we've had a um, zoomable map custom built. 
Um, I've mentioned the JW play already, and also uh, things about Drush. So um, where to next? Okay, talk about the project team. Well, we have a web manager who's in the um, communications department and um, who's also the project manager. We have the dev manager who's myself and, and also our technical manager who's my supervisor. Um, and um, he's responsible for all the development across different platforms within the library. So we have our two developer, uh, Drupal developers. Um, we have another developer we brought on, sort of mid-project, and um, he has, he's determined to be able to get through the project without learning anything about Drupal. So, <laughs> but, so that means the, the goal for the rest of the team is to try and teach him something about Drupal. <laughs> get him to use it by the end. So it may well happen, but uh, we'll see what. We have a, a lead designer and also like a, a support designer. Um, and we have our um, three content editors in the communication, the designers and the content editors are in the communications team. Um, okay, so the exhibition will be coming, will be, oh, the online exhibition will be coming on, uh, opening on the 14th of um, February um, for Valentine's Day. Um, you can visit that domain now, love hyphen and hyphen devotion.com, uh, and that'll take you through to some information about the exhibition. Um, okay, so, um, we, yeah, um, that's, that's not all I had to say. Okay, I've got a couple other things I wanted to mention as well. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, like, um, yeah, some of my other points I mentioned. That, so we found that, um, that through, particularly through the launch of our corporate site last year, I mean, um, in 2010, not 2011, but 2010, um, that our federated publishing, that is getting um, publishing through other areas within our organisation has been quite effective and we're able to continue to improve that. It's not, and rather than um, stagnating, that's just, that has happened with other CMS systems that we've, the library has run. You get a new system in and then it drop, the usage actually drops off after, <laughs> after the original, the original excitement. So instead, we're actually building up momentum with Drupal. So that's been really a great plus. Um, we're, we're also planning our next exhibition project, which will use the same system. And then we need to work out how to um, implement a, a new theme onto the same functionality that we've implemented. Um, yeah, um, yeah, and also I remember, um, like, um, Dimitri was saying some of his original um, posts on uh, Drupal.org. Well, I, it's funny, I was looking um, last night at some of my original um, comment, is issue comments uh, a couple of years ago, and we worked with um, Rick DeBoer and, um, when he was with uh, IVSA a couple of years ago on uh, revisioning and module grants. And I remember um, posting some questions about Rick's um, uh, modules, and then Rick was saying, um, what do you mean by this, Richard? And I, and I didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got lost at that point. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, so that was funny. But um, yeah, um, Rick, Rick uh, helped us quite a bit with that aspect because of our federated publishing model. And also put us in touch with uh, Victoria University, the web uh, futures group there. And I know there's um, at least one member of that team here this, today. Um, they gave us a lot of advice with our original um, Drupal journey. Um, so, anything else? Oh, I think that's about it. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Yep. I have a question. Uh, I have a question, but it's, it's actually to do with um, digitization of artifacts in such institutions. So, yeah. uh, is it the same as many others where the digitization is actually driven by curatorial needs rather than having an ongoing digitization process for all your holdings? I know the Na National Library, I think they've been doing it for about 15 years and they've got about 3% of their collection done, as last I heard. Yeah. Um, it's really not my area of expertise, oh, okay. but, but yeah, I think you're right in that it's 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 a very large um, job, and it's really hard to work out which items get done next. It's a constant discussion that's happening, and um, it's a 
very small proportion of stuff is digitized. Yeah. Um, and um, the other issue is material that's born digital, c collecting those, because the library has had um, a, 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 the effect of the Victorian legislation which requires people to submit hard copies of all their published materials, because that's not happening with the digital material. So um, whereas we've had a complete record of published items in the library, in hard copy we haven't, we basically haven't been collecting these uh, electronic uh, items. So that's been, in, from that point of view, it's possibly the period that we've been through recently may well be a, a bit of a black hole in our history because, <laughs> because of that reason. But yeah, um, there's, there's different, it's, there's all kinds of different reasons why um, things get selected for scanning. Um, but um, we, one of the projects we've worked on is the, um, the AFL footy record. And that is now part of the, li the library's collection. Every week, the football record gets submitted to the library electronically, and it gets goes into that system. So you can look up the, the current footy record. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Richard. Thanks. Um, just about getting your head around Drupal 7 and what it offers, you know, how did you go about it from looking at what you wanted to do with the requirements and then go find what Drupal 7 could do or did you do a really big review of what Drupal 7 offered and then? Yeah, <laughs> I think it was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was one of those um, elevator conversations that Daniel was talking about. Um, yeah, um, I think we certainly discussed it a few times and Brian was present in those conversations with our and with our project manager. And we looked at um, what our capability was. We knew we could deliver in six. Um, and we, but we didn't want to, one of the things was we didn't want to get left behind in terms of seven. So say if we went through another year without starting on seven, it would be, I, I, from my point of view, I, I felt it would, we'd be a year behind in terms of catching up to what triple seven was being able to deliver. So, and, and, and as a result, the, the, the library would miss out on that benefit. So. Yeah, I think that um, you, when you when you have the opportunity to to grab that and and um, implement a new, a new um, system with the advantage that we've got Brian there to, to guide us through that situation, and we can do the like I think you know the, we did the one of our developers did the first install. That's not a problem, but it's just getting through the basic concepts that are involved. So having a bit of guidance there is was really great. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be useful. So, um, we had a big meeting before I really started on the project, and we went through what the brief was for what was to be developed. And um, I really pushed for Drupal 7 mainly because I thought all of the functionality that they wanted was at a ready enough stage. Um, I think the only module that we really had was the JW Player, which was a development module, um, and it didn't have audio captions and um, subtitle, closed captions and audio descriptions built in, but I don't think the Drupal 6 version of it had that anyway. So I created that patch. But basically, it's for the same reasons. I think Drupal 7 is at a stage now where if you are building a new site, it just makes sense to build it in Drupal 7 because if you build a site now, it's probably maybe two or three years, Drupal 8 is going to come out. And you know, if it's a big budget project, then to spend all the money now and then have to potentially spend the same or half as much again to migrate to Drupal 8 if you want to maintain that system. It just doesn't make sense to me. So that was why I really pushed for it and it worked so far. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, um, I, I was, it wasn't so much a matter of a uh, question about choosing Drupal 7. It was about um, knowing sort of how much you looked at what Drupal 7 could do for, you know, and technolo technologically mm. and or or so it's kind of um, inventing things for your site because it was possible or thinking through what the requirements were. I guess, so say for search, you obviously yeah. decided Drupal 7 search was not good enough. You know, why wasn't it good enough? Why did you choose Solar? Like, you know, that, uh, the choosing of the modules and um, the, uh, how to make the most of what Drupal 7 offers, I guess. Um. The main reason to choose Solar, which exists for Drupal 6 as well, was that 
it allows us to search the content of uploaded documents. So when they're doing a search, they're not just ser searching the stuff that's been typed in as your body text or whatever. You can actually search within PDF and Word documents that are attachments. And so I think you tried to use Solar once before on another project and... We worked with, um, with David on that, yeah. Yeah. So for our events, the facet, creating a faceted um, search. But was yeah. there something where the guys hadn't been able to get it to work, or that what? Because you didn't have Solar working. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. Well, I mean, I we had remember. a th few issues, and it was a long kind of project we went through with with David. But yeah. uh, I think um, we probably got it sorted out now. And yeah. yeah. So I'd already had experience setting up Solar as well. So that was an event. Like a lot of this was, I've done a lot of these things or close to these things so I could in a consultative role at that first meeting go yes we can do this in Drupal 7 and because I'm very active in the community and do development in core and contrib space as well we knew we could either create it or use what was available pretty safely. Hmm. Did that answer your all your questions? Yeah okay. Um, yeah just a question about the plan to reuse the um, reuse the the structure of the site for other exhibitions and stuff. Yeah. So is that something that you'd also look at um, yeah, at releasing as like make make files or um, con you know as a as a distro or make files or something like that to to give give other institutions a starting point for exhibition sort of space or something like that. I don't think there's anything specifically in that we can. At, or, or, or even even if even if <laughs> even if Brian, you talk to it about how yeah. you're planning to roll this out as a you know n next exhibition comes along, and how are you planning to to roll this out? Like, do you just you know as opposed to setting up from scratch again? You know. Can I just get a quick show of hands of how many people are developer centric, just so I don't go on for too long about it? Okay, cool. Um, so the real core of this project is the context module, and it allows us to. Um, trigger actions based on things like the path. So rather than use multi-site functionality, this really is two sites in one. So the love and devotion is one site which has its own look and then um, driving all of this underneath is the actual exhibitions portal. So most of the content types that are used for content within the exhibitions, uh, sorry, within love and devotion are actually content types that will be used on all exhibitions, apart from where there's something that's very unique. So using context we're changing the theme when you go into the love and devotion. So we've got a domain name that Richard put up but that redirects to, can I say the URL or not? No, better. <laughs> no to the, the domain name slash love and devotion. Um, and so when you're at that URL um, I've created custom code which will probably get contributed back as well for Apache Solar which allows you to create custom search pages, but doesn't have any way to trigger those from a... So, sorry, Apache Solar only overrides the default search form in um, search block, and the Apache Solar pages doesn't create other blocks for you to have a search form within a section of a site. So I created a, a small custom object, which is very easy, but I'm going to release it anyway because there's a need for it, where based on the path, you can actually redirect the search result to your custom search page. So the custom search within each, and it's very, like at the moment I've created it in a way that'll be manual updated, but I'm gonna release it as a contrib with a UI so you can put a path in and say where it's got to direct to quite easily with Solar. And then using context, we're changing the theme when you're in slash love and devotion over the default exhibitions portal theme. And so basically we'll just add more contexts when there's a new exhibition, and the exhibitions portal continues to grow. Yeah, and yeah. And then with, that, with a different interface for each section. Yeah, and then a lot of the content that was coming through was fed from the corporate site. So we're using feeds, and rather than create a feed just for love and devotion, um, I created a feed for events, and then we have a taxonomy term that's part of that feed that's for love and devotion. That way, in the future, when there's another exhibition, whatever it may be, or you said that the new one you know the name of, yeah. we'll add that taxonomy term on the corporate site and it will be included in the feed and then we just create views within each exhibition that give us the information for that exhibition. So 
basically it's really an exhibitions portal that drives love and devotion and it was one of the struggles in the project was that the main driving project that I was working on was love and devotion and all the design for the exhibition portal came after <laughs> after the love and devotion stuff but I think we've got to a good point so far so yeah yeah, and that's every every step along the way I was trying to, because I knew that was the aim, to try and create the content types in a way that would be reusable for future exhibitions. And then when we started to do the feeds, I'm like, well, hang on, you're going to do this for future exhibitions, so let's make it an events feed, not a love and devotion events feed, things like that. Yeah, it's, mm. yeah I'd rather rather not say roll out because it's, there is a fair bit of development work still to go with each one. It's just, oh, yeah, definitely. It's just a starting point, and you can reuse the same functionality. Yeah. But the theming is going to be considerable. Some, some leverage. Yeah. yeah from the work we've done. Mm, that's right, yeah. Any more questions? Hi. Um, you mentioned earlier that the designers were part of a uh, communications yep. mob and that you guys were the developers. Yeah. Did the designers sort of inform you guys what sort of content they want on there? Did they deliver like actual mock-ups that you guys, the developers would work to? And I'm just interested in like what that workflow was like between the developers and the designers. Yeah, sure. They, um, they come up with a design brief. So it's a, a document um, that informs a design. Then they um, came up with some wireframes through and that informed the um, the uh, overall the technical specification, the project specification. Yeah. Um, so at each point, they have to get signed off by the executive of the organisation. So it's quite a formal process of approval for that to happen. Um, then there's a couple of pages of mock-ups that are also come brought brought together and and approved. Um, and then the um, designer went ahead and just basically filled out all the design elements that were required. Um, so I think, I mean, I, it was it, from the point of view of the developers, um, I think there's probably some experience that we've gained from that, this project we can feed back into that process um, because it was fairly complex um, in terms of the design requirements, yeah. building, in, building that into the um, you know, di different variations in des designs and page layouts and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, as Brian said, 12 page types. Um, so um, yeah, it's, it's um, I guess we, it's, there is a, there's actually a problem in that, that we are in two different teams, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a bit of a compromise in terms of how we structure the teams, yeah. Cool, thanks. Sure, okay. Everyone, please thank Richard for his presentation. <laughs> Thanks for being up. Thank you.